I'd like to welcome everybody back to the Independent Investor Channel. My name is Ryan. I put these videos out. To, I really think there's a lot of benefit in trying to put this highly on puzzle together. I do. They've provided a ton of information publicly disclosed, whether or not you want to go to sec.gov or you want to go to the highlyon.com website. These have been made available throughout the course of the company going through this back merger process. And now that it's publicly traded, I had to go back and remind myself of some of the things that I read in the original investor presentation. In this video, we're gonna jump into the financials that were disclosed in that, speaking about projected sales over the next four years from here going into 2024, what those revenue estimates could look like, what some of the EBITDA projections look like, where some of that data has come from, how realistic it's going to be for Hylion to meet some of those uh, sales projections and revenue projections going forward. And I'm going to attempt to tie together what I saw in that original financials disclosure with some of the things that I've seen uh, transpire up until now, the rollout of the new Innovation Council for the Hypertruck ERX, what that's going to mean going into the latter part of 2021, and especially into the show me year of 2022 uh, for Hylion. Guys, you're going to want to stay tuned with me on this as we jump into the financial statement on what to expect over the next coming years for Hylion. I love numbers, and, and there's been a few attempts at breaking down the summary proposal of financials in the original corporate presentation. I'm going to save this in the link of the description of this video as well, so you guys can reference this entire presentation. If you're a bull or a bear on Hylion, okay, um, if you're looking to invest or not to invest in the company, I don't put out my videos to encourage you to do one thing or another. I, I could care less what you do, honestly. Um, I share what it is I do with my money and my investing thesis based on the due diligence that I've done uh, for the benefit of the subscriber base and audience because uh, seemingly this information is available to the masses, but it's amazing how individual of an opinion uh, can be derived from looking at these numbers with uh, a certain different lens or a certain different extrapolation of the data on what Hylion is proposing to us and what is going to transpire over the next five years. Very, very important to look at this. 20% of this has already been completed. We've already moved out of 2020 and we are firmly in this uh, opportunity where we're looking to close down on Q1 here in uh, 2021. So we want to look at this in context and say, well, is Hylion being honest with what they're telling us? Um, uh, do they need to make sales? Are they making sales? Are they proposing that they're making sales? Are they lying about what they're doing? Uh, who's better, Nicola or Hylion? Who's more dishonest? Um, who's telling us the truth? Um, I'll have you know, when I looked at Nicola, it made it through my first layer of evaluation and I didn't look at it again. Uh, I wasn't interested in putting $5 into Nikola uh, at all. Uh, and come to find out my instinct about that company and based on what I saw and based on my evaluation of the CEO uh, being, yes, charismatic, uh, being somewhat clownish in his application and absolutely doing a, a, a fabulous job in, in making a bunch of sheep uh, follow what it is that he was putting down, that ended up biting him because being uh, dishonest, with would-be investors only comes up to bite you. I actually think Nicola has a lot more pain to the downside and it will be a vindication when Hylion actually does uh, crop above uh, what Nicola's share price is right now. And, and they are, they're quickly converging. Uh, and when that convergence matches and Hylion is able to somewhat disconnect uh, from Nicola altogether, uh, if you wanna know about hydrogen fuel cell, and looking at the wave of the future as far as investments and, and technology and innovation and proposals going forward, I would bet on Hylion for hydrogen fuel cell, not Nikola. So that's a pretty bold statement. And within this investor presentation, it actually alludes to that very thing in a couple of things, in a couple of places, agreements that they have ready to rock when the infrastructure is conducive to doing so. 
but not until then. There's way more revenue to be had here in changing the trucking industry in the short term and medium term than putting all of your hopes into hydrogen fuel cell when the infrastructure does not freaking exist. And I can speak till I'm blue in the face on this, but I want you guys to understand this for yourself. So to go back into the summary of financials that was uh, identified in the corporate presentation when the SPAC merger was actually announced and Hylion stood up their website. You could find this on their website at the time. This was prior to um, its actual SPAC merger being voted on, approved, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but I, there's a few key points in here because I had to go back and review this. And I, you know, have been a long shareholder in Hylion. There was a short time there when it ran up to the 50s and came back down where I sold the stock at about 26. I went ahead and exited it because I figured that there was probably going to be some exacerbating selling, uh, not indicative of any of the company's financials or binding agreements or anything that they had said that was going to matter. In other words, there was a real disconnect happening between the prospects of Hylion and how the stock uh, was trading. And that's when the shorts got a hold of it and drove it down below 10. And the rest is history. 2021 is done. They said they were going to sell 20 units here in column one. Did they do that? Yes, they did. They sold the 20 units, uh, uh, realized revenue of about a million dollars. Nothing too crazy. Rather irrelevant in the long scheme of things. However, I do take away a couple of things on their 2020 rollout and their 2020 estimates. Can they make sales? Yes. Can they hold true on the numbers that they've projected? Yes. Our fleet's interested in going from point A to point Z. What that means is there's an interest in the product at point A and you go all the way to a finished and happy customer at point Z. Yes, there is. 20 units were sold and installed in 2020. That's available in Thomas Healy's transcript uh, on the last quarter rollout of progress on how many units were sold. Now, they didn't book that revenue from last year. And I, it'll be interesting to see here in a couple days when they report where they're going to book that revenue, if there was bookable revenue there, um, and whether or not they're going to actually show some of that on the books there. I don't really care either way because it's rather insignificant to look at 2020 and just say they're not going to sell, they're not going to sell. You have to really compare what it is that I'm showing you guys on this presentation and what was released on the new presentation to put the, the, the pieces together in understanding how they're going to ramp up these total hybrid electric units sold in 2021. You'll notice the tick mark in the Hypertruck uh, hyper ERX column in 2021 is a nil. There's nothing there. This starts to ramp up in 2022. The Innovation Council is going to supplement that gap in time to realizing the first 2022 estimates. And for you guys that have come to me and told me that Hylion needs sales, they need sales, they need sales, I will agree with you uh, conceptually, but not in reality. In reality, what they need to do is they need to stick to the roadmap that was presented to customers and they need to be given ample time to make sure that they can realize the penetration that is going to be had from the Innovation Council 10. The 10 companies that have stood up and said, yep, we're going to be part of this deal. Now, this was a present supplies prize to me. I didn't have this information at the time I took a position in Hylion at the time I did. So we would have had no indication at that time that they would have been able to meet the 2023 and 2024 projections as the Hypertruck ERX ramps up triples from 2022 and then more than doubles from 2023 into 2024. But let's talk about the 2500 real quick in the column of 2022. Let's just assume that they make it through 2021 and they've got some positive news come back, maybe some constructive criticism. Hopefully they've got some process improvement initiatives from each of the companies that are part of the Hypertruck ERX Innovation Council, okay? How are they going to realize that 2,500 units sold? We'll hold on, back up the truck a little bit. Remember the agility pre-order. And I think there's been some misconception in the uh, agility pre-order being up to 1,000 trucks. That, that is not true. In this investor presentation, it says in two separate places 
that that is a binding pre-order. That means that those trucks will be realized. Anybody want to do the quick math on that for uh, revenue sales? 1,000 trucks, yeah? At $250,000, $225,000 a piece. It's a $300 million order, guys. All right. More importantly, not only does that uh, suggest that the bottom line revenue in 2022 will be absolutely met with ease, but also that the 250 order from A&G will also be honored and that they will have half of the orders to make up through the Innovation Council into 2022 as they ramp up production and delivery based on the interest uh, by the um, Innovation Council to purchase the initial Hypertruck ERX units, okay? Now, as we step forward into 2023, I just want to bring your attention to the 8,500 units of projected in 2023. Remember how many uh, trucks we are exposing ourselves to through the Innovation Council? Anybody remember? 100,000. 100,000 trucks of um, uh, trucks that are out there on the road is being represented in the Innovation Council. So basically, what this is saying is that if Hylion can win one-tenth, less than one-tenth of that prospective business, keep in mind, these Freightliners did not join this Innovation Council to twiddle their thumbs. They did not join this Innovation Council to waste their time. They joined this Innovation Council because they're all interested in stepping in the right direction in a way that's going to be economically feasible, it's going to be realistic in the short and medium term, and it's going to move them into a greener future, maybe perhaps even realizing a net carbon negative future for their, for their fleets. So you look at this 8,500 and you think, wow, that, that's incredible. That, that's a pretty big estimate there. I beg to differ. What this means to me is that this is realizing 8.5% of the total overall represented fleet uh, from the Innovation Council. Now, some could be more, some could be less. The, the, the broad reach that's represented within the core nucleus of the Innovation Council could also represent other customers that Thomas Healy alluded to on recent interviews that are not part of the Innovation Council, but are kind of chomping at the bit to get their hands on some of these units. Now, some of these units could be one, two, three hundred orders, right? Some of these orders could be upwards of a thousand, just like Agility has represented. I think the real takeaway is to understand that whether it be a 250 order or whether it be a thousand orders, these companies are ready to freaking go and they're capable of putting up these huge, huge orders for Hylion to start to turn this up and ramp up mass production. That's why he alludes to this all the time. When it's time to start to ramp up into mass production, this is where it's going to really shed some light here. All right. Now into 2023, we're talking about breaking the billion dollar revenue mark here in 2023. Absolutely possible here. I think this transition from 4,100 doubling to 8,000 into 2023 speaks to the transition of going from the retrofitted model on existing trucks and turning out a lot of them off of the OEM hubs, which Hylion alludes to in the new investor presentation as really being a key strategic uh, infrastructure move or uh, an unnecessary uh, need for Hylion to create infrastructure because the OEM hubs already exist. In other words, all companies need to do is say yes, check the box, get it installed at the OEM, and that's where some of these projections are coming from. And I also think that's where some of the gross profit margins start to increase because I think that the OEM margins coming off the line and the Hypertruck ERX margins, as those start to increase, really does impact these margins at less than 30%, increasing to 31.5 and 35.3 respectively, as these numbers start to increase over time. 
Okay, so the over one billion in uh, in uh, revenue here, and then the gross profit of three hundred and twenty million is just going to be absolutely fabulous for the company, and then uh, d over doubling here into twenty twenty four. Now, I just want to close this video and talk about a couple things about what Hylion has identified here. This is interesting. This $2 billion mark and these 34,000 uh, units sold here um, seems really, really incredible if they can match this. And, and you start to think, wow, can they, can they honestly sell 19,000 Hypertruck ERXs uh, to, these, to these fleets? Think about the Innovation Council for just a second again. I want to bring your attention back to uh, the uh, amount of exposure that they have, not only within the, the council and to cust customers that they have access to, not only domestically, but abroad, okay? This 19,000 really starts to take, um, take some consideration when you're talking about knocking out 1,000 fleet orders of the Hypertruck ERX turned off the line and meeting this bottom line 34,000 units as we step into 2024 and realize this $2 billion of revenue. Now keep in mind conservatively that this only reflects 2.2% of the $94 billion annual addressable market. What does that mean? The $94 billion comes from the 2022 estimates of 944,000 class eight trucks sold annually. So think about that for a second, guys. Almost a million units, almost a million units sold. And Hylion is basically saying, look, we're, we're anticipating that we're going to get 19,000 of them. Are they going to be able to do it? I don't know. It's going to be based on the strength of the product and the amount of usefulness and bottom line efficiency that is codified when these are start started to roll out to the fleets and these guys are really starting to understand the bottom line savings uh, to, to the companies. This is going to be huge here. So the $2 billion in revenue estimates is, is just over 2% of the total market of the total number of class eight trucks that are sold every single year every single year they've already identified that the chassis is going to be peter built that these are going to be built on very exciting stuff going forward and i really wanted to spend some time on the deep financials that were turned out and i think have been forgotten about here as hylion has just been firing away on all cylinders rolling out all this exciting information about the company but i really wanted to show you guys my interpretation of these financials as we're really starting to go um, to, to move forward into the to the sales growth uh, as well as the um, ramping up in positive and getting this company to positive revenue uh, going forward. All right, guys, so we've come out of the financial disclosures here. Amazing how all these things kind of tie in. You really do need to compare what was in the original investor presentation that of which I'll provide in the description below for you guys and the new investor presentation that brings a lot of these things together. The, these aren't just made up things. This is not just an empty dirt field out in the middle of nowhere. These are real strategic initiatives that Hylion is rolling out with regard to their uh, hydrogen fuel cell solution, with regard to their uh, CNG, RNG hybrid solution, when and where those are going to transition to OEM installations rather than retrofit, when and if the Hypertruck ERX is going to start to meet their projected uh, sales numbers. 2,500 is what I've earmarked in this video going into 2022. And to my estimate, they've already met half of that right now. So I, I really think the disconnect between what's going on at the company and the underlying stock price, institutions are buying right now. Uh, I think just over 10 right now, valued just at over 1.5 billion. One year ago, projected uh, after uh, initially uh, rolling out as a SPAC was estimated at an enterprise value of 1.1 billion. Have we pro progressed since then to realize a higher valuation here? Once Hylion starts to crank out some of these numbers and starts to double and triple some of these uh, sales numbers or production numbers, 
and the revenue starts starts to double, triple, and in some cases even greater based on their conservative estimates going into 2024, I think the sky's the limit for this company, no doubt about it. And I roll out these uh, informational videos to try to extrapolate what I see on especially one slide in this video is what we looked at, but there's so much data there to be had in understanding whether or not Hylion can meet these projections as disclosed to the public. Guys, I really appreciate you tuning in for this video. I'm going to make sure and subscribe to the message, the Independent Investor Channel. Leave your comments at the bottom of this video and share the message with anybody out there that you know is looking at, doesn't like, wants to take a position in, wants to argue with me about Hylion. Share the video. Bring them on. It's totally fine. Guys, I appreciate you sticking with me through the totality of this video. Good luck in your investment future. <laughs>